So now in this video, I decided to uh, take a 555 timer. This is actually an old diagram. Um, it's uh, on the same sheet as the uh, recent videos I made with the light dependent resistor. Um, so in any case, we got the 555 timer. The light dependent resistor controls the speed of the flashing there. So not 100%, uh, percent. of course we got the uh, capacitor value, but we also have a 1000 ohm resistor right here. So the output is going to be high for a longer period of time than it is gonna be low. So again, capacitor charges, that uh, pin is disconnected while it charges, and then it connects to ground while it discharges. And the output is high while the capacitor charges, and uh, is low, or actually that way, is low when the capacitor discharges right there. Pin two and pin six monitor when it gets up to two thirds supply voltage, and down to one third supply voltage and switches the states. Basic 555 timer stuff. Four, pin four is the reset pin. It's waiting for, uh, I think with all of them, um, almost zero volts right there, but it's waiting for a low input. That's the main thing. We put it to the positive supply, it prevents it from doing anything. If this gets a low input, pin four right there, then the output is gonna be low no matter what. It's the most powerful pin on the integrated uh, circuit. Of course, I'm using a 1000 ohm resistor to protect the blue LED because it connects to ground better than the positive supply. It's an NE555. And um, also, blue LEDs are naturally brighter than red LEDs. So we got 220 ohm uh, to help get the red LED more current so that it will be, you know, about as bright as the blue LED, hopefully, right there. So again, the uh, light dependent resistor conducts better as more light falls on it. I believe I designed the circuit probably for when I turn the lamp off. It looks like we have, um, you know, kind of an okay amount of a flashing right there. And uh, the lamp is at its brightest setting now. I'll put it at a dimmer one. And uh, even this isn't too bad. So maybe uh, these were like the two light levels that uh, I was working with when I designed it. Um, so I don't remember. When I actually like des designed this, it was uh, a long time ago. Um, so, you know, I can only try to figure out what I was uh, thinking of at the time. Which, uh, you know, you should be doing whenever you look at a circuit. What were they thinking when they designed it? But yeah, there you can see that uh, we got the red LED. It's, uh, it looks almost steadily on in person. On camera, it looks steadily on. Whereas the blue one is definitely... Uh, flickering so that's because the output is high longer we have a thousand ohms that is always going to be involved with the charging of the capacitor so if they're flashing at an equal amount of time that would be a 50 percent duty cycle but we will never have that uh, we can kind of get close to that if it's dark um, but when it is bright we got almost no resistance here and we got a thousand ohms so it's going to take a period of time to charge you know 1000 microfarad you know not terribly long um but uh, in any case it's going to take a period of time to charge but when it discharges this is the only resistance we got whatever current goes through there goes to ground um so it can you know almost instantly discharge even if it takes a period of time to charge because we always have a thousand ohms while charging we like i said this makes a direct connection to ground we can only go so low on uh, this resistor but with five volts Maybe 220 is okay. I would definitely wouldn't go any lower than that. Um, and you, you can always go higher. Um, but in any case, uh, that's why the red LED will, you know, be lit up uh, longer when it is brighter. But still, it's uh, not so long that, you know, it looks like it's like on and then quickly flashes off and the blue one quickly flashes and then it's on for a while. The blue one still, um, you know, pops up constantly right there so um yeah that is uh about it i'll uh first i'll zoom in here take a closer look at that i'm using a 100 microfarad capacitor right there of course if we want the timing to take 10 times longer than uh for both high and low than it is now we could use a 100 i mean a thousand microfarad if we wanted to go 10 times faster we could use 10 microfarad so um you know capacitors don't come in as many values as resistors for the most part. Um, so usually adjusting the resistance is easier, but you can do quite a bit just by swapping uh, capacitors as well. 
we will look at the actual circuit there and uh, light dependent resistor positive there and trying to keep them from uh, touching each other right there sometimes I have these set wide sometimes narrow I only have so many light dependent resistors that I use and um, so I'm just kind of bending the legs so hopefully they'll be apart from each other whether they're far apart or close and we have both of those pins looking at the voltage of the capacitor and as always you can see the red LED goes to the negative supply right there so you know the output is high when it lights up and of course so it goes through transistors so it's not a direct connection but uh, there is a connection there and when the blue LED lights up it's coming from the positive supply and so you know the output is connected to ground right there we got that current path when you go positive and negative so in any case uh, all topics I covered in a lot of other videos so gonna end it there thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video